Well, hey everyone. Today is August 1st, and if things would have gone as planned, I would be in surgery right now. But, as you can see, I'm not. After thinking about this for several months, weighing all of the pros and cons, looking at all the options, and none of the options were good, I decided to postpone it. I need more time to think about it. Plus, like I mentioned on Patreon just recently, that I don't want to break my momentum. I've been making great progress on the camp, the screen porch, I've been putting up the cedar shingles. It's coming out awesome. Got a little bit more to go on one wall, and then all of those will be up. Got the glass door on, replaced the old door of the camp, took out that, the old door that was original, took that out, uh, I had these glass doors that I've had for years. Lori sanded all the paint off it, got it down to the bare wood, put new finish on that. And I made all new casing and jam and all that stuff for it. That was quite the process. Put it all together, hung it. Now I just got to get a lock and door latch for it. It's great. I love it. And... We talked about a garden for a long time. All the stumps are gone. We got a flat spot to garden. We're rolling. We're going to start a new business. We got a lot going on. And to put a halt to all of that and then be incapacitated for six weeks or better, it's not in the cards right now. So I decided to put everything off. And today, I'm just kicking around in God's country, out here in the beaver swamps, checking on my trail cams, doing stuff that I love to do. I've been getting some great stuff on my trail cams, my friends. Several different moose, big cow moose, several different bulls, some, a one real big one, real nice bull, another one, they're both in velvet, they just look awesome, some does with their fawns, Bobcat, all kinds of cool stuff. Two different bear cubs. I got one during the day on the edge of the beaver pond and then one about a mile away on another cam. A much younger cub. Just awesome. The only thing that's really disheartening is I've been fishing these waterways all my life and they were always teeming with trout. If there were beaver there, there were trout. And the fishing has been getting worse and worse, and I have not even had a single bite all day. Not even a bite. You know, I observe, what I observe is a lot different than the normal person. I don't live a normal life. I don't live in a normal person's life environment, okay? So when I'm out in the woods and there's a heavy rain, I see foam pouring down the trees, several species of trees, foam running down the bark, gathering at the stump. It's on every waterway. I don't care if it's a fast moving stream or a stagnant little pool, there's foam all over the place. Now I've been kicking around the woods all my life. And I've always seen foam on, on, in the water, but occasionally, on isolated incidences. I know about how on natural decaying plant matter and leaves and fast moving water will act as a surfactant and it creates foam. And you'll see it like below a waterfall and it'll gather in a slow moving pool. Or if there's some toxins coming into the water upstream. Like I said, it's isolated incidences. But when we get in a vehicle and we drive 28 miles to go upload a video or go shopping, every single body of water, every one that I go by has foam all over it after a hard rain. Yeah, so it's raining as you can see. And in the past I talked about where I was finding that the trees were foaming when it was raining. I've been seeing a lot of it 
So it's pouring, I decided to come out with my camera. Everywhere I look is foam. I gotta show you guys this. I want you to see it. So a lot of people responded, I've never seen that before. Well, I hate to say it, but it's awful hard to see from your couch. <laughs> you gotta get out there and in the woods and look if you want to see what's going on in the woods. So take a look at this. So here's a maple tree here and there's some foam right there dripping down the tree. Here's some foam here right there. More foam there. More foam there. Look at the foam on that one over there. Okay. Let's walk a little bit. There's some more foam right there. You can see it coming down the tree. Look at that. You see? It's foam, just like out of a car wash. Foamy crap coming down the tree. Let's go look at this one, because this is a real good example. Look at that. Okay, look at that. I'm not going to point my camera higher because I don't want to get all rain in the lens. See what I'm talking about, people? If you have children growing up on this earth, you are the people that need to open your eyes. This is the only place they have to live, man. Don't turn a blind eye to it. Look at this crap. This is coming down in the rain. It's not the natural phenomenon that occasionally takes place with pine trees. Okay, now here's a beech tree. There's a foam right there. Here's a yellow birch. Look at that. That's freaking nuts. Hey Frankie, I don't even want him drinking from puddles anymore. Look at the suds coming down this tree. See that? That's nuts. It's coming down in the rain. It's dripping right down here in a row. Right down there, see? And it's pooling up right there. Look at this shit. Okay, I am standing in one spot right now and I'm going to pan around with my camera. There's some foam right there at the bottom of that yellow birch. Some people call it a golden birch. Look at this. There's some more right there. There's some more right there. Look at further back. Let me pan out. Right there. There's some more. This is crazy. Look at it. That's on a yellow birch. Look at that. It's on that leaf. Look at the suds. Look at this stuff. Coming down the trees, man. But tomorrow I'm going to go down the road on my quad and I bet you there's going to be foam all over the creeks again. This is sickening. No wonder all the trees are dying. Well, just yesterday during the rain, I was filming all of that foam coming down the yellow birch. I was going to take a ride on the quad and check out the streams because I knew there would be a bunch of foam on them. Well, I come down this morning. I'm not seeing the foam on the trees this morning because it's not raining and all of that stuff has dissipated. But I come down to the stream and of course there's foam out here. I knew there would be. There's foam right there floating down. There's a whole bunch collected over there. Look at that stuff. See that? Whatever is in that foam can't be doing the environment any good. Whether that is why the fishing is becoming so horrible, I don't know. 
I really feel for the younger generation. I really do. Because what I'm seeing, especially this year, the pine trees and the spruce trees are turning brown extremely fast. Day after day, it's brown pine needles it's coming to the ground like as if it's snowing out. Needles falling to the ground day after day after day, just like they do in the fall when they go through their normal exfoliation process. I don't know if that's what they call it, but that's pretty much what it is. So if they're losing all of their needles now, and then in the fall they lose whatever percentage of needles that they do then, the trees aren't going to survive. And the pine and the spruce and the hemlock are the building materials that we use. So the newer generation, the young people of today, they're going to have some struggles, man. And the sad thing is, it's the people that should be paying attention to it the most are paying attention to it the least because they're too busy doing this. Keep this in mind when you ponder the footage that I just showed you. If you came home from work one day and somebody rearranged all your furniture, you would notice it. Even if only subtle changes were made, you would notice them because you are familiar with your surroundings. But if I came to your house for the first time, I wouldn't notice the changes. So the changes in the environment that I see are different than what you see because I have surrounded myself with the forest. I live in the woods and I'm in the woods every single day. So the changes that I see will go unnoticed by other folks. Most people watching this video live the 40 hour a week lifestyle. Lots of rushing around. Now they might see some dead and dying trees along the roadside, but they quickly blame that on road salt spray and car exhaust. It's possible that a very small percentage of the dying trees are dying from that, but if you're seeing a hundred dead trees along the roadside, trust me, folks, there's a hundred more behind those and a hundred more behind those and so on. Because what you are seeing is the ratio that the forest is dying off at. Okay? Keep that in mind. How do you like that? Hmm? What are you doing? What were you doing on the hummingbird feeder? You're not a hummingbird. What are you doing? Hmm? Are you a female house finch? Is that where you are? Huh? Is that where you are? Look at them. They're pretty amazing, isn't it? I don't know why. I don't know how. But I'm not arguing with it. <laughs> I'm going to try and turn the camera. Oh, here he goes. He flew away. Frank and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end, Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss. Frankie and the boss